This video is sponsored by Square. Hey guys, I'm Alexandra and welcome to season three of my rental reno. I've moved out of the treehouse and into my brand new two bedroom home. I'm gonna be making over this space start to finish, room by room. I'm so excited. Am my camera ready? Hi neighbor, don't worry. <laughs> new selfie spot. Cute. This has been a steep learning curve for me. Alexandra, you're failing. Let's get started. Today we are tackling the dining room in Mia Noah's new apartment. So this room is kind of tricky because it is attached to our living room behind me. And we tried the layout of having the sofa facing the fireplace and toying with the idea of doing the dining room where the living room is now, but there's just not enough space. The sofa was totally in the way of the door and it just looked really crowded and cramped. So this side of the room is what I'm working with for our dining space. And I feel like it's probably so relatable to all of you who live at home in small spaces and are trying to figure out a layout that works. Before we get started, make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel. I am so close to 400,000 subscribers. Carla, I'm gonna ask you this until we're at a million. Do you remember when I had zero subscribers? She's rolling her eyes and nodding yes. I do tons of small space makeovers, render friendly makeovers, and try to make decorating your home less intimidating. Okay, so my first tip is to lay down a rug. I find that a lot of people don't think about using rugs in a dining area, but it really helps define areas in your home, especially if it's all open. In our living room, we have a rectangle rug because that works best with the sofa. So in the dining room, I'm switching it up and I'm going with something round. This rug is from Rugs USA. I love how it looks like a little flower. This is super cute. Don't go for a shag rug in a dining room because that's just gonna be so hard to clean. There's gonna be like crumbs in your carpet. <laughs> this is gonna be easy to clean and it has like an outdoor texture to it. It's jute and yeah, I just love the texture it brings. Okay, now it's time to bring in the table. This is a key, key point in your dining room transformation. You want to make sure you're also going for a round table. If you don't have any room for a table, which I know some of you watching, that is probably your situation. I love drop leaf tables. I used one in Alana's studio apartment and it's just the greatest because when she's not using it, she just folds it down, it's tucked away, and then she has so much more space. So I'm thinking of putting the table obviously over the rug. It's gonna feel a bit tucked away, but then it's gonna leave us with so much more open space. So. When you're bringing in a table or setting up a dining room in your space, think about creating a nook. So this right here is my dining nook, right here. Okay, I haven't actually seen the table over the rug. Live reaction. Don't look. Not gonna look. Okay, don't know if I love this. <laughs> I do like how it brings in a lot of texture to the space. It definitely like separates it and makes the table the focal point of the space. TBD, let's just keep decorating. I might change it later. This table is from Article and you guys know, I love shopping at Article for furniture. They just have classic timeless pieces that will last forever. Oh God. Oh my goodness. Yep. So even though I'm really excited to have this brand new table, I have to say it's kind of nostalgic to getting rid of the white table. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I literally built my business from this one table for the last three years. There was a time where I didn't know what was gonna happen to my small business and sitting at that little white table in the treehouse, I realized that I had to pivot really, really quickly because a lot of my job, most of it, relies on going into people's homes and making over their spaces. And for a while there, that wasn't possible. That's why I launched my virtual makeover package over on my website and the response was over Overwhelming. I realized suddenly that an e-commerce business was absolutely achievable and it was such an awesome way to connect with you guys and make over your spaces virtually. I know that there's so many small business owners that watch my channel and Square Online makes it so easy 
to build your business online and provides you with all the tools needed to start your own e-commerce business. You can use our beautiful templates to set up a retail store. You can use it to schedule appointments, curbside pickup delivery, customize product pages, and the online payment system is compatible with a ton of online e-commerce platforms and it's secure and reliable. You can get paid instantly anytime, anywhere from customers all over the world. Basically like anything that's involved with building an e-commerce business, Square Online makes it super, super simple. If you're thinking of starting a business of your own, consider using Square. All of their tools and everything you need to know will be linked in my description box. Okay, when you're working on creating a dining nook, you wanna think about using paint because paint is such a great way to divide a space. If you do an accent wall or a shape on the wall, we did this in Lindsay's dining room. I will link that video up here. It was such a fun one. Paint in any space, even if you're not painting like the four walls is going to make it feel like it's a separate area in your home. But if you can't paint, this next tip is for you. So I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can actually buy peel and stick arch decals on Etsy. It's so fun, you can do a custom size, you can pick a pre-made size. It's gonna look like we've painted this arch on the wall, but actually we just use some peel and stick wallpaper. If I hate it, I can take it down. If I move, I can just take this decal off and you don't have to like paint over anything. To install this, the first thing Alana and I are doing is measuring the decal. Did you find the center and then work your way out from that? Uh-uh, uh-uh, nope, 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 nope. I don't do math, Alana does math. We measured the wall, divided that in two. No, no, okay, wait, okay, okay. Taking a measurement of the wall and the decal, subtracting the two together, dividing that number by two, nope. Why don't we, why don't we like go to like. The difference between the two is eight inches. The number we get is. <laughs> We're making two ticks on the wall, okay? These two ticks represent where the decal is gonna go. Everyone says it's not clear. Just hang the decal wherever you want on the wall. <laughs> To make sure this decal is centered on the wall, we are going to measure the wall, so that's 43 inches, and then we're going to measure the decal, which is 35. The difference between those two numbers is eight. We're going to divide eight by two because we're trying to figure out the distance on this side of the wall and the distance on this side of the wall. That is four inches from the left side and the right side and lining our decal up nicely. You could also do tick marks all the way up until you reach like the tip of your arch, but we're just doing a couple. And honestly, you can also eyeball it too, if you don't wanna be like super precise and if you also get math anxiety, which I just realized is a real thing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to tape the decal up with painter's tape and line it up to the little ticks we made at the bottom. We're gonna start from the top and then smooth it out all the way to the bottom, but the ticks are a great guiding point. We want the decal to be on those tick marks. This is definitely a two person job. You want one person to be smoothing and you want the other person to be peeling the back off the sticker. I just love this hack because I feel like everyone's like, yeah, just paint an arch, it's so easy. It is, I've done it many times and shown you guys how to do it. But I also feel like some people just don't wanna paint or some people aren't allowed to paint in their rentals. That's a huge thing. This is awesome because it's literally just a giant sticker that you can peel off when you leave your place. We don't have four walls, but it feels like, okay, this is the dining room side and this is the living room side. We're just gonna cut out the bottom where the outlet goes, but yeah, that looks really cool. Next up, I'm hanging this mirror. I'm gonna hang it right above the arch so it kind of overlaps. This mirror was in Noah's family home when he was growing up, it was in his entryway. If you have the space, I would highly recommend leaning a floor mirror in your dining room, especially if it's a small nook. It's gonna brighten up the space, open it up. This one's a bit small, but I think it's gonna work here. It really does open up the space. This came with Noah's old apartment, like it was just there, and we took it with us. It's so fun. Now it's time to tackle lighting, and this is pretty key when you're trying to separate spaces. I find that having a large pendant over your table, it's just a statement piece, it looks beautiful, but it also kind of indicates that this is your dining table, 
this is where it sits and really divides your living from your dining space. In the Trio's apartment, I didn't have a place where I could hang a pendant light over my dining table. So instead, I had a light beside it on the wall. So you don't have to do a pendant, a wall light, or even a table lamp somewhere will just help really divide the space. The thing about pendant lights and cords, especially if you're hanging it over a table, they can get really messy really quickly and just kind of look like not the cutest. <laughs> Except that I found this macrame pendant light cord. Gaga Chandra. How amazing. I found this on Etsy. I'm gonna link the seller below. I had her make me a custom size and it's just so beautiful. It's not gonna look like it's just hanging out. It's gonna look purposeful. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for this thick of a cord, but if you just have a regular pendant light, you can get these hooks. I will also link them down below. They go into the ceiling and they just look way better than like your traditional cup hook. I'm gonna be using a cup hook because we need the cord to fit through it. I'm not happy about it, but I get it. This is not safe. Would not recommend anyone standing on a table. Lottie's like, I'll catch you if you fall. Alana is here in case I fall. Okay, let's do this. Cord. I'm hanging another cup hook up here just so the cord hangs nicely and it's not like, like this. <laughs> we don't want it like that. I am so in love with this macrame pendant cord. I think it solves a lot of people's problems when it comes to having like plug-in pendants. I feel like in a lot of rentals, you can't hardwire lights and you wanna use a plug-in pendant, but then having the cord can look kind of messy, especially if you're doing this method of it coming up the wall and then swagging across over your table. Bestie, I'm having a moment. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Not only do I not like the rug, <laughs> I also don't like this light and it's like 1 p.m. We have one day to shoot this makeover and I'm like, it's not right. I still stand by this cord hack. I think it's genius. And I think in any other part of my home, it would work. I've actually even seen these used as bedside table lights. I'm gonna put the photo up here cause it's brilliant. But for this setup, it's just not working. And I really feel like we need something more substantial that's really going to divide this space. So I don't know why this always happens to me, probably because I work in home decor. I always just have like stuff floating around and we will 100% use this for another makeover. Just like I knew we would use this light for another makeover. This was gonna be in our kitchen. It's like the, the weight in this space that we need. Nothing's really grounded in the space, if that makes sense. This is gonna really ground everything. But this is a hardwired light and there's no, there's no hardwiring in the ceiling. We're gonna do a hack and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a pendant light like this renter friendly. We're going to cut the wire to the desired height of the light. Obviously you wanna hold the light up above your table before you cut. We are gonna use these existing holes in the light canopy to screw to the ceiling. We're just using butterfly anchors and screws for this. It looks so good, it's perfect. So you can actually get battery powered chargeable light bulbs that literally screw in to the light socket in your light. It's like the coolest thing. Since we made this last minute switch like literally an hour ago, I don't actually have the bulbs. I'm gonna order them on Amazon. They will be linked down below, but I wanna show you. They're $25 for two. You literally screw them into the light socket or they come with a little hook so you could hang them from the ceiling or your patio or whatever you wanna do with them. I'm feeling so much better. This light just looks incredible here. And I'm so happy that we could make this a renter friendly hack. Okay, so next up we're going to be bringing in some chairs. If you love a more relaxed, eclectic look, mix and match your chairs. So I'm bringing in these ones from HomeSense. These are so beautiful. They have the cane webbing in them, they're black. And then I'm balancing them out with the chairs that I already had at the tree house. Together, it just looks super visually interesting in here. We've chosen to put four dining chairs, but you don't have to do that. Especially if you live in a small space, it can feel really cluttered really quickly. So just put two chairs at your table, have other chairs maybe in your living room that you can bring over when you have guests over, but don't feel like locked into having a four person dinner table if you have a small space. Next up, we're gonna do a casual lean on the fireplace using this photo. This was from Noah's old living room. I think it's just such a beautiful piece to have on our fireplace. So 
I wanted to kind of lean on the fireplace. I wanted to look very casual, but because we need to keep safety in mind, I'm just gonna quickly put a command hook on the back of here. I said a command hook. It's actually command Velcro. You just stick it on the back like this. I already have another piece up on the wall to hold the picture in place and make sure it doesn't fall. If you have little kids around, you really wanna make sure this is fastened with like a screw. But in our case, we're just gonna, we're just gonna lean it. In next week's video, I'm redoing my living room makeover. Petunia needs a new home because we're gonna have, this is kind of like a sneak peek, but we're gonna have a bench underneath the window. So my plan was to put her right beside the fireplace because lots of light comes in through this door and she needs lots of light. She's large and in charge. I can still open the door. I'm not worried about it. I feel like you guys at home are gonna be worried about it. So yeah, we're gonna live with her here. I might bring her back to the studio. She was originally from the studio. For now, it looks great. And we're just gonna see if it functions well. Check out my home tour coming in a couple weeks and you can see where Petunia landed. <laughs> now I'm gonna hang these beautiful art pieces by Noah's mom. We're mixing and matching a lot of wood tones, but that's really the mood that I'm going for. Laid back, mismatched wood tones and colors, and I'm just, I'm all about it. This isn't a working fireplace. It never will be a working fireplace. Our landlords just installed it for the aesthetic, you know, the mood. So I'm gonna put some pillar candles in here. They probably won't be lit, but they definitely like set a mood, you know? You like the candles? We are almost at the end of this makeover. It's time to add in all of those finishing touches. The key here is you want layers, tons of prints, plants, candles, anything that you feel is gonna bring your dining room to life. It's those like small elements that really pull a space together. Let's take a look at what this dining room looked like before. Blank slate, totally empty. Are you guys ready? This is what the dining room looks like now. Thank you so much to Square for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out the description box for a link to start using Square's tools today. Next week is my living room makeover redo. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss when it goes live, and I will see you next Saturday. Bye. This is why I didn't take grade 12 math, cause my teacher told me to drop it. <laughs> she said, Alexandra, you're failing and it's gonna bring your whole average down. So yeah, I dropped the course. Okay.